I'm Melissa Case from Hat to Hem, and today I'm painting. Lately, I've noticed a bit of a trend on Instagram. I noticed that Kat from Kat's Costumery, Marty from Scraps and Sequence, and Marika from Enchanted Rose Costumes all posted about plans to make some historically inspired Disney projects. I've been wanting to make another project like that for years. It was just a matter of how, and more importantly, who. The character I chose makes complete sense to me, but I probably wouldn't have thought of her if not for my dog. For those who follow me on Instagram, you may have noticed that Maisie really loves the live action version of Lady and the Tramp. It's the only movie she actively watches straight through. Luckily, I too love Lady and the Tramp, and that's actually why I bought Maisie a light blue collar. So, in honor of Maisie, I'm making a human version of Lady. The second challenge was hell. As of editing this video, I am 39 weeks pregnant. I wanted to get this video up while I was feeling inspired, so I knew I couldn't dive down a research hole and still have time to start this project pre-baby. So I opted to go a slightly different route, one I like to call the bygone era. That's what I like to call the era that's vaguely Victorian slash Edwardian by way of Golden Hollywood. It's Meet Me in St. Louis. It's Gigi. It's Main Street USA if you want to keep with the Disney theme. Once I figured out the aesthetic, it was time to figure out the design. Again, because of the heavily pregnant thing, I decided the best course of action would be to choose my fabrics before giving birth. I knew the best shot I had at actually sewing this together would be if I already had the fabrics in my home. Besides, I was having a difficult time settling on a design. A quick trip to Joann's had me find all the fabrics I needed and lifted my design block. A flip through my books with a clearer idea of what I wanted helped me nail down my design. Before I actually made the project, I decided to make a costume rendered painting. While we were filming an installment of Costume Drama's 20 Questions series, I mentioned to Noelle that I wished I was better at making these watercolors. I decided I needed to act on that desire rather than just wish for it without putting in the work. When you're coming up with a new design, especially if it's based off of an existing character, I think there are two things that you really need to stay faithful to. First off is the original design, obviously. But second, I think you need to stay true to the character that you're adapting. In my case, I decided to go with Lady at the very beginning of the movie. Well, not very beginning, she was a puppy at the beginning. But towards the beginning of the movie, uh, around the time that she actually meets the tramp. So before they even go on their adventure. This lady is curious and innocent and naive. So one of the things I did to represent that was I gave her a young woman's outfit. Uh, the skirts are a little bit shorter. Not by much, but a little bit. You can see her boots pretty well. But her skirts are still longer than if she was a child. She's almost at adulthood, but not quite. I had a terrible time trying to figure out how I was going to represent her red ears. I didn't want her shirt waist to be completely rust red, but I also didn't want it to be just her sleeves that were red because I don't think that was going to look good. In the end, I decided to give her a bolero, which I think ended up being a pretty good solution. Now, even though I'm not currently planning on making a hat, I had to draw one in anyway. The reason I'm not actually making a hat just yet is because I'm going to be making this for my half-scale dress form. Again, I want to try and make this fairly quickly, and I really don't feel like waiting until my body decides what shape it wants to be after the baby's born. If I end up liking how this looks, I might end up making it full-scale later, but we'll see. And of course, she needs to have that big Edwardian hair.
I also decided to give her a hair bow, again, just to drive home the fact that she's not 100% in adulthood yet. And of course, I need an extra nod to her collar with her necklace. This is a little bit unusual for me. Usually when I do a sketch, it's just the dress kind of floating on its own, but I decided to actually give her a face. I'm not entirely sure that I like how it turned out, but I tried. I actually think I liked it better pre-paint, but what can you do? Hopefully this is one of those things I'll just get better with practice. And of course, she needed to have her boots. They definitely have a Jane Porter vibe, and I'm kind of here for that. American Duchess actually produces shoes that are very similar to this, and hopefully I will own them one day. Just not yet. Another thing about this sketch that's a little unusual compared to what I usually do is I decided to actually make a background. And since this is the beginning of the movie, I decided to put her in a fenced yard. I covered the lady part of the sketch with masking fluid and I let it completely dry before I broke out the paints. This will keep my sketch nice and safe while I try and paint out the background. All right, time to add some color. This is always a slightly nerve wracking process for me. I used to draw a lot when I was in grade school, but I always did pencil sketches in black and white because I was never very good at adding color. I always thought it took away from what I had drawn. So this is me stepping outside my comfort zone. <laughs> Actually using watercolor at all is me outside my comfort zone. When I was in college, I did take some painting classes, but we used oil paintings, which ended up being my preferred media. But watercolor seems to be the media of choice when people are doing sketches like these. So I decided to try and experiment with this for now. Maybe one day I'll try and do sketches with oil paints, but that still feels like more work than I need to do. A big difference between using watercolor versus oil paints is deciding what colors you're putting down first. Usually with oil paints, I start with the darkest color first, and then I start adding lighter and lighter tones on top of that, and that's how you're able to get dimension. But with watercolor, I have to do the opposite. I put down the lighter tones first, and then I gradually get darker and darker as things go on. It definitely takes some getting used to when you're used to doing things one way, and then all of a sudden you have to do the complete opposite. I do like how the bushes turned out though. I really doubted myself doing a full background, but I figured the experience is probably a good thing. And besides, I always really enjoyed painting landscapes versus figures. Once the background was completely dry, it's time to just kind of peel off that masking fluid. The trick with masking fluid is to make sure first that the masking fluid is completely dry before you start painting. And then you have to make sure your painting is completely dry before you take the masking fluid off. Going back to my design, I decided I wanted to stay true to a lady's two-tone coat. So the skirt actually has a couple of different fabrics involved. The first one is this brown, which is actually a little bit darker than anything that Lady actually wears, but it's from my stash, so I decided I might as well use it. I have this nice light tan for these little contrast bits. <laughs> I 
<laughs> and now here's the challenge of trying to paint something that's white on white paper. I think her shirt waist ended up coming across a little bit more beigey, but oh well. At least the fabric I chose is a fairly warm white. And now for the fun of painting stripes with watercolor for the first time. I've been pretty lucky. The last few times I've needed to use watercolor, it was with mostly flat colors. So I didn't have to worry about stripes or anything that's like that. But I wasn't so lucky this time. The trick with stripes is to make sure that they're completely dry before you start going over it with other colors. I do really like how they turned out though. And of course, the boots need buttons. But the stripes were just a warm up because now I get to paint plaid. I don't think I've ever painted plaid before. I don't even wear plaid that much. Although I think that's more because I wore a school uniform for a very long time. So plaid and I don't always get along. <laughs> Even though I originally was planning to make Lady a brunette, I ended up giving her more of a... I'm actually not sure if that counts as auburn or if it's just straight up red, but I did make it match her little bolero. It was around this point I was starting to feel a little skeptical about the plaid. Uh, not the fabric choice, but the painting choice. Uh, I do think it ends up coming together a little bit later though. It just takes some time. I think that's the hardest part about watercolor. You really have to be patient. I decided to bring in that lovely shade of blue with her belt, along with the hair bow, but I'm not 100% sure I'm gonna actually make the hair bow because my half scale dress form doesn't have hair or a head. I guess I could always pin on the back of the collar maybe? Eh, we'll see. I also added a little bit of blue to her hat just to tie everything together. And now more plaid experiments. I think what ended up really pulling it together was adding these little white bits. I'm not sure why adding the white is what really made the difference between me not being sure about this painting to me actually kind of liking it, but here we are. I did end up outlining Lady. I know that with these kind of sketches you don't usually do that, but she was kind of blending in with the background, so I decided that was probably the best course of action. And I really have no regrets, because I do think it made a bit of a difference. Maybe if I hadn't done such an elaborate background, not outlining it would have been okay, but I think she needed to stand out a little bit more. Alright, off comes the tape, and here is my finished design. I really am excited about this project. I love my fabric choices. I love how this design came together. I think it's really cute. And I really hope you'll join me as I bring this to life. Be sure to follow me on Instagram or Facebook for live updates. And hopefully, this video will be up in a couple of weeks, depending on how quickly this baby gets born. Well, I'll see you next time. Bye!